After you complete your Ed Puzzle and the activity on symbiosis, I would like you to please answer this discussion board question. Are red-billed oxbeckers an example of mutualism or parasitism? You may be familiar with these images of large African mammals like water buffalo, rhinos, hippos, elephants, giraffes, and these birds that ride on the back of these mammals. And you may have learned in the past that the mammals have a mutualistic relationship with the birds because the birds eat ticks and other parasites that are on the skin of these mammals and they help to serve as an early warning system for predators. Another example of a type of bird that can be found on the backs of these large African mammals are the red-billed oxpeckers. Um, these birds have been observed eating ticks off the mammals, but they have also been observed eating earwax and eating blood in the wounds of the mammals, keeping the wounds open and keeping the blood flowing. Um, and so scientists question whether these birds have a mutualistic or parasitic relationship with these mammals. So attached to this post, there is a short video clip about the oxpeckers right here with some information about um, their relationship with these mammals. And there's this video um, that describes the experiment conducted. And the video contains three graphs that show uh, the results of an experiment in, that was conducted in order to try to answer this question. I want you to look at the data, read about the experiment, and look at the graphs and answer these questions. What do you notice or wonder about these graphs? Imagine you are a large African mammal. What might be the costs or the benefits of a symbiotic relationship with an oxpecker? Like if you were um, a giraffe, how would you feel if the oxpeckers were riding on your back all the time? Do you think that they would be more helpful or harmful? And finally, do you think the oxpecker has a mutualistic or parasitic relationship with the African mammals? And then I want you to explain your answer using the information that you took away from the graphs. I encourage you to type your answer into a Google Doc and then copy paste it into the discussion board. That way you can fix spelling errors and grammar errors uh, before you type in your answer. Please make sure you do not submit your answer as a private comment because then your classmates will not be able to see your answer. If you are not sure how to do that, uh, there is a video tutorial that is attached here. Um, if you send me a private comment with your answers, you will be asked to resubmit your answer into the discussion board. In addition to your discussion post, you must also respond to two other classmates. And I provided some sentence starters to practice having meaningful, productive conversations in the discussion board. So um, you can either contribute to the conversation uh, by adding thoughtful, respectful, and substantive comments. So for example, if you agree with someone, you can say, I had a similar idea because, if someone says something that you would like clarification or further explanation, um, you can say, I am not sure I am following your point about blank. Can you explain that again? Or respectfully offer a different perspective if you disagree with the classmate's perspective or interpretation of the data. Although I understand your point that blank, I think blank. Remember our norms for having discussions is we always want to be respectful as if we were in class. So here is a little background on the experiment and the data. Uh, this research was conducted by a guy named Paul Weeks and he uh, wanted to see how the presence of the oxpecker bird affected oxen in Africa. And so he took a herd of cattle and he separated them into 
two groups. In the control group, um, he allowed the ox peckers to land on the cattle. And then in the other group, uh, he shooed away any ox peckers um, before they could land on the cattle. So he scared them. So these cattle did not have any ox peckers on them. This cattle, uh, this group of cattle did. So he repeated the experiment for a total of three different trials. And then for each trial, he measured three different things. He first measured the change in the number of ticks that were present on the cattle. So he counted the number of ticks that were on the cattle before the start of the experiment. And then he counted um, the number of ticks after the experiment. And the graph shows the result of the change. The white bars show the group with the ox peckers, and the black bars show the group without the ox peckers. So here's with the ox peckers and without the ox peckers. And this is the change in the number of ticks that were on the oxen. The next thing he measured was the number of open wounds that were uh, bleeding on the cattle. And the graph shows the results. Again, the white bars show the group with the ox peckers, and the black bars show the group without the ox peckers. And this graph separates the bars into each of the three trials. And finally, he measured the amount of earwax that was in the ears of the cattle. Um, and the graph below shows the results. The white bars, again, show the group with the ox peckers, and the black bars show the group without the ox peckers. So I have attached this document into your discussion board post so you can reopen this and take a closer look at the graphs. So that way you can answer the questions um, about the data and come up with an answer as to whether you think these ox peckers are, um, have a mutualistic relationship with mammals or if they are more like parasites. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email.